Hey, welcome back to the gym. It's 12.30. It is, what is today? Today's Wednesday. Today's Wednesday. It is May... No, it's not. It's May 23rd. I almost said it was May 16th. Uh, but today we got a, like a, a, a few questions that I got asked that were kind of interesting. Um, that, uh, like, this is me kind of posing the question to you and kind of posing uh, the question around on the internet. Uh, I'd really like to hear you guys' responses. I really like it when you guys write in and, and tell me what you think. Uh, not necessarily, uh, like, you can tell me about the show, too, if you, if you like it, if you hate it, and, and, uh, and uh, what you think about it. That's cool, too, but more about your views, your perspectives, and the things that you find interesting, because I think that those are perspectives. Today's topic is a little bit around uh, a few different things. We're going to bounce around. So uh, one of the questions was basically, by the way, please like, comment, share, send this out to everybody that you know. If you like the message that Grit Jam is putting out about health and how it's the number one resource that you have in your life, and if you disagree with that, I would really like to hear uh, your reasoning on how you have justified or, and by justified, I'm not saying, I'm not here to argue with you, I'm here to listen. Uh, how you think of something else as being greater than the health that you do have. Uh, from my perspective, uh, I think that it is a huge, huge mistake to not say something and not give your perspective because you are, uh, because of, that someone might get upset. Okay, I think that's a huge, huge mistake that is really running rampant in, in our world today and just with like and how people interact. Uh, and I even notice that when I ask questions, I ask questions because I want to know. I want to learn. I want to know your perspective. And I know you're supposed to stay from away from religion and what is it, religion, politics, money. You're supposed to stay away from those three things. But uh, and, but like even if we get into health anymore, we're talking about like uh, like you can't talk about uh, yeah, you're supposed to stick with health and the weather, right? But now we're talking about like, uh, because of anti-vaccinations and climate change, we can't talk about either of those too. So uh, I want to know about your perspective and what you think and how you think and why you think the way that you do. Uh, and I, I want to hear from you. Uh, but one of the things that was, uh, some of the questions around strength conditioning and uh, I don't even know, I, I know how to say the answer, but I don't really know how to, tell you guys the story of how, how it came to be because it was just it was kind of a combination of things so th this person was asking about uh, like why I think that uh, if you're in strength conditioning you have to do the same thing over and over and over and uh, they're like aren't you going to get how do I say this aren't you going to get burnt out and isn't your body going to get adapt to that thing and isn't your body going to get used to that imposed demand and isn't that isn't your body going to uh, and they had all these reasons for why it would work. And I was like, actually, those are all reasons for why this will work. <laughs> There's all those reasons for why you do want to do those things. Uh, you do want your body to adapt. And your body does take a little bit to adapt to the thing and learn from it and, and, and then grow from it. So you do want to do the same thing for a really long period of time. And imposed demand uh, isn't about fooling your body all the time. We need a little, we need to learn. We need to be coaxing along the body to do what we want it to do. Uh, so. The, the, a lot of the examples that were given were this like very much these very innovative, creative, kind of sexy type exercises and programs that are that are exciting and, and, and new and I, well they don't, they're not new at all actually they're 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 old uh, but this person is they're new to this person so uh, so the answer is strength conditioning is not about who can be the most creative it's uh, the, the, the reality is that strength conditioning is a very measurable science. Uh, we, can, uh, we can actually look at this thing and we can, we can measure what's going on and we have a lot of data behind what we do say and why we do what we do in the strength world. Uh, really, I, I think you could argue that the strength world and the performance world knows much, much more about how it gets uh, its results than the medical field does about how it gets theirs. Uh, and I almost guarantee you that, I, I don't think it's arguable, I think I almost guarantee you that in the strength world, we know more about how strength is gained than the medical field knows about how medicine actually works. Uh, because it, it's an external chemical, and there's a lot of reasons for that, but there's, it's an external chemical going into your body, and we don't really know how your chemistry is going to react to it until we try it. Whereas with strength conditioning, uh, human to human, there are heavy markers that would indicate what is going to happen. Uh, so we, we know a little bit about what's gonna happen. Really, we don't know until we get there. We're gathering a bunch of data, and then we try it and see if it works. Um, and if it doesn't, then we have to go back to the drawing board. But that's why we do the assessment, to figure out where, uh, where are we weak, where are we strong, 
and how do we get past that point? So a lot of the time, like uh, you take a, 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 not a simple sport, um, but something that we had the most at on is sprinting. Uh, you take a sprinter and you put them, you give them something to resist and they don't perform very well as a block. Well, then you know that stability is their problem. They need to have more stability so that they can put more force into the ground. And it's the same way with, uh, our bodies are all gonna react basically the same way in a conceptual manner. So it's not about who can be the most creative in the strength world. Strength conditioning is not about who can be the most creative. It's about, uh, it, 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 strength conditioning is very much a measurable science uh, that, uh, that is repeatable. It's not like, oh, that was just a one-time thing, it's not gonna work again. No, it's very, very, very repeatable. Uh, so that was one of the questions uh, to, to address that. You do want, uh, you do want the body to adapt. You don't want the body to not adapt. Like this idea that, oh, the body should never adapt, we wanna keep it confused. No, like you want the body to adapt. Uh, and once it adapts and you get the most that you can out of that adaptation, then we go back and then we can change it and we can move forward with something new and different. Uh, but being innovative for the sake of innovation is, is silly. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's not gonna work very well. Which I did not like up. So we're gonna do that real quick. And I'm wearing black on black, so I think I can just put it on. Anyway, all right, sorry to, didn't mic up before guys, but anyway, uh, one of the other questions was around vanity. And uh, I, I don't know if I have an interesting perspective around vanity or not. Uh, I know that a lot of people kind of feel guilty for their goals that they come into grid gym with. And I, I think that's really too bad because I don't think, for one, I don't think vanity is bad. I, I, I don't get why we have this, uh, this thing in our, in our culture that, that, uh, we, that vanity would be bad because we all on some level think about how we do appear to the outside world. Like you don't see a, a, uh, very many people with uh, a tattoo on their forehead that says fuck, for instance, because like that's that would be a very heavy statement to the outside world that is completely unnecessary, right? Uh, we all get up and we think about the clothes that we're going to put on our bodies. Uh, we uh, choose to do our hair or not do our hair, brush our teeth or not brush our teeth. Like we, we think about how we appear to the outside world. Uh, and on some level, that is vanity. And so why wouldn't we take that into consideration when we say, I want to be a certain body fat percentage, or I want my muscles to look a certain way, or I want to feel a certain way uh, when I put on X clothes. Uh, not X, X is probably the wrong, uh, when I put on certain clothes. So I, I don't know if vanity is a bad thing uh, for the person who asked that question. Like, um, I, I get the whole guilt trip that the status quo places upon uh, or tries to place upon people is like, no, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be vain. That's vain. That's bad. That's a, that's a, that's one of the sins. Uh, but I think that's kind of silly. All of us think about how we're going to be perceived, uh, by the outside world, uh, whether we give a shit about it or not is, uh, is a totally different question, but all of us at least think about it to some level. Anyway, so is vanity bad? I think that's a question for you to figure out for yourself. I think the status quo puts uh, puts the, the the label on there, and I don't know if the label is uh, is is worth it. You know, like I just I just don't. Um, like I work out. Like part of the reason I work out is because I want to look a certain way. I don't think that anything's wrong with that. Um, part of the reason I work out is because I want to feel a certain way. Part of the reason I work out is because I want to perform a certain way. So is, is that vain? Probably. What's the matter with that? Uh, so I think the, the vanity is something that the status quo is, uh, is, is confused about. It's, it's something that they don't wanna see. It's very real, it's already in there. It's how it's gonna be. So, um, so is vanity bad? It's a question for you to, to ponder, but I would, I would greatly encourage um, challenging and confronting that fear that, uh, that to feel guilty over, uh, over it. <laughs> We're all going to do it on some level. Every one of us is going to do it on some level. Uh, how much weight should I lose is another question I get. Uh, I actually get this one on a pretty regular basis, uh, but I got this uh, the other day. How much weight should I lose? You know, should I lose a percentage of my body weight? Should I lose a percentage of my fat? Should I focus on, uh, or which should I focus on? I think that's up to you a little bit, but for the most part, I think you're much, much better off focusing just on fat because really, you don't really get it. When you start working out, you don't get a choice in the matter. You're going to gain a little bit of muscle and you're gonna lose a little bit of fat. 
there's just it's just going to happen. Uh, it's been disproven that you have to choose one or the other. That you can only you can only gain muscle or you can only lose fat. No, they both happen at the same time. They both happen on some level at the same time. Depending on your body chemistry, they might happen. Uh, like you might be more predisposed to losing less fat and gaining more muscle. You might be more predisposed to to gaining a little bit of fat while you gain more muscle. It it uh, it just depends on the person. But uh, but for the most part, how much weight should you lose? Well, I think it depends where you're starting. So if you're a 115 pound girl who's five foot six, you don't need to lose any weight. We need to stack some pounds on. Uh, we need to get some muscle, excuse me, we need to get some muscle on that, on that body and we need to get by getting some weight in your hands uh, and you're probably under eating a great deal. Now, if you're 115 pounds, five foot, tall and uh you're walking around and you uh and you're like let's say 20 percent body fat we probably want to uh we probably just want to focus on strength and uh, again like you don't need to lose a lot of weight now if you're 300 pounds five foot tall we need to lose quite a bit of weight right i don't even need to say a body fat percentage to know that we need to lose some weight so it depends on where you are uh guys if you are not under 30 percent body fat you need to get your head checked uh, 30% body fat is uh, the old, it used to be that be, to be considered obese, you, um, for females it was anything above 30, and for males it was anything above 20. And now uh, for males it's anything above 30, and for females it's anything above 40%. Now this is, this is absurd, we just keep on moving the marker. Uh, it's kind of like, uh, like a lot of people where, uh, when, when they are scared that they won't hit the target, they'll drop the target. That's, I understand why someone would do that because it's like, oh man, like the target was way too high. Like what were we thinking? Let's drop the target. But that's faulty thinking, it's faulty reasoning. Uh, if you're going to do that, you need, like if you're not, if you find out, if you get like halfway, let's say you've got a year long goal to lose, uh, we've gotta lose 50 pounds to get down to 20% body fat. All right, so we know that we're gonna lose 50 pounds of fat to get down to that 20%. So we're looking at that and halfway, at the six month point, we're at 25 pounds. Uh, so at 25 pounds uh, and we're, then we stagnate out and we're at nine months and we're still at 20, only at 25 pounds. Like what do we need to do? Well, we don't need to drop the target down to 35 pounds and hope that we hit it. We need to keep the target at 50, and even though we're only at 25, we only have three months to go, and we have to increase the level of activity. So we need to look harder at nutrition, uh, and we need to look probably more towards sleep if exercise is on point. If exercise is on point, we need to look at sleep and nutrition, and then we also need to look at mindset. This mindset is always going to be something that holds you back. If all you did, if, if you focused, uh, if you folks focused 81% of your Put 81% of your focus, not nah, I'm doing the bad math, jeez. 89% of your focus on mindset, 9% of your focus on exercise, 1% of your focus on, on recovery, and 1% of your focus on nutrition, you will be fine. Because the mindset will, you will do the things in the recovery and the nutrition because you focused on the mindset. Those things will just end up inevitably happening. So you don't need to put a ton of focus on them. But that exercise is something that they like you're talking about running around with a chainsaw you cannot dampen your focus towards that so I, that's why i say nine percent on the exercise but okay so how much weight should you lose dudes you have to be below 30 percent it is insane not to be below 30 percent and really females should be below 30 percent and guys should be below 20 percent if you're not there you have to find a way to get there and uh people like to poke fun at the bmi uh BMI is a ratio between your height and your weight, and people like to be like, no, nah, that doesn't mean anything. It does. Bigger people break down faster. So even if you do have uh, a 27 um, or a 32 BMI, you still wanna try to lose some weight because bigger people break down faster. You're, when we look at statistics, we know that the joints, uh, we have more joint injuries, and uh, we, are, we have, uh, more surgeries, we have more physical therapy, uh, and our uh, like our joints just wear out faster. So you want to be a little bit smaller. But what's the way to deal with that? What's the best way to deal with that? Is to make your joints durable by getting gaining strength and stability. That's the best thing that you can do for those joints. So is losing a ton of weight really the answer? No, it's getting strong. But you do want to consider that you need to be like even those big those big strong man guys. 
they're still they're not like 50 percent body fat they couldn't they, they're just massive massive balls of muscle uh and that's how all of us need to be we not strong like strong men but we need to have some muscle on our body uh, and be focusing on that so how much weight should you lose it depends on the person where you're starting and if you should even lose weight but if, you probably already know you probably already know if uh if you're five foot tall and you're 300 pounds you gotta lose some weight if you're six foot tall 300 pounds you probably need to lose some weight um anyway uh being happy this is another question like does exercise really make you happy i don't know if there's any really like like heavy research or science back stuff that exercise makes you happy but i'm positive that anybody who sits around and doesn't do anything feels like crap so by proxy that would make sense that going out and being active helps you be happy but i do think that uh we get confused between being happy and feeling good and there's a huge difference there uh if you wanted to just feel good go get some drugs um or uh you know uh do something you know like there's tons of ways to feel good uh there's it's uh, being happy is a totally different deal and we put a lot of emphasis on our society as as far as being happy like are you happy 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 i think it, like you put that much pressure on yourself to be happy and it's going to be really hard go being happy all the time. I don't think there's anything wrong with being sad or just being uh, okay. Uh, I don't think you need to be happy all the time. I think that that would be a that would be a foolish thing to try to do. All right. So um, another question I want to be was this person wanted to be able to compete and be active. What do they need to do? Well. First of all, this person needed to lose some body fat uh, if they wanted to be active in the life that they wanted to have. Uh, I don't remember what their numbers were, but they needed to lose about 30 pounds of fat to get down to a weight that they could manageably run around with. Uh, then they needed to get stronger first. This is the thing. This is what everybody messes up on. They try to just go out and do the thing that they wanted to do, thinking that will get them in shape. You don't do the thing that you want to do to get in shape. You get in shape in order to do the thing that you want to do. So if you want to, uh, like jogging, dancing, uh, this person was talking about broom ball. Uh, I kind of finally figured out what they were talking about. I think it's basically like hockey with a broom. Uh, if you want to play slow pitch softball, you don't do that to get in shape. You don't call that exercise because it's barely exercise. I mean, it would be a really hard stretch considering that that would improve your physical health. I don't think it's taking away from it, but uh, you want to get in shape in order to do that thing. Like when you're talking to a, you would never think of a, of a football player in the NFL doing football to get in shape. You would think of them in a weight room, throwing medicine balls, practicing their sport, running sprints, doing that kind of stuff to be able to be better on the football field. That's what you need to do in your life too. Uh, you need to train in order to live your life, not live your life in order to train. It's a, it's a, it, the status quo likes to put this like this blanket statement in, and, uh, and it gets out of whack. So better health. Better health, let's get clear. What was this question? I don't even remember. Oh, better health. So a lot of people will ask me, or they'll be like, how do I get into better health? How do I get into better health? How do I get into better health? Well, health is really just this very ambiguous word. So what does it actually mean is my first question. Like, what's it mean to you? What's, what's health mean to you? What do you want to do in your life? Like, what is, like, what is, what is, what is getting to the health word? What's like going on, man? Uh, <laughs> um, so to me, Let's get clear on what that is. What do you want to do first? And then let's work backwards. So if you want to have a chiseled six pack, uh, let's work backwards from that. If you want to be a rough, tough football player, you want to be a dancer, you want to be, um, you want to be able to pick your kids up off of the floor when you're, uh, your grandkids off the floor when you're 75 and they're dead weights and they're asleep at your house and carry them to bed. Like, well, like, what does it mean to you? And then we can work backwards from there because we have to, we have to look at that. And then we have to look at your body, figure out where you are right now and look at your injury history and where, so we got to look in the past and then we got to look at what we can actually move forward with from there. But let's get clear on what that is. What does health mean to you? Cause to me, what I think health, I think mindset, nutrition, exercise, recovery, we have to have those four weeks of the car to be able to move forward in a way that gets you where you want to go because health uh, to me is the vehicle to everything you want to make more money you got to have health uh, you want to be able to enjoy the money that you do have you got to have health you want to have the greatest relationship possible well you should focus on your health 
and then and then you'll be better uh, at getting the relationship that you do want. You want the you want to build the relationship that you do have into the greatest thing it could be. Well, it, it, let's get some health. Uh, if you want to. Um, Enjoy the relationship that you do have. Well, if you had food poisoning, you couldn't relation, you couldn't enjoy that relationship very well. So we need some health. Uh, time, time is one that people point at all the time. It's like health, relationships, wealth, time, right? So how do you enjoy your time if you're not healthy? Yeah, it would suck. So let's get clear. Let's get clear on what health means to you. Let's get clear on what you actually do want, and then from there. From there, we can actually build out a program to get you to where you want to go. And I don't think it's just about being creative, though. Like we said at the at the beginning of the show, strength conditioning is not just about who can be the most creative. Uh, being creative does probably lead to some engagement with strength and conditioning. But we we know that strength and conditioning is a very measurable science. Uh, we know that when we do this, we're going to get this. And uh, once in a while, uh, like, and we know we know that so well that if it doesn't happen, if we did this and we didn't get this, then we know that something was missing in the middle. Uh, there was a stability restriction. Uh, there's uh, there's some kind of dietary thing. There's they're not sleeping. Like it's it's we know so much about this that if we don't get this one something didn't happen in the middle. Uh, so, so strength is not about who and, and conditioning and fat loss and all these things. They are a very measurable science that we can get very, very clear with. They are not uh, who can be the most creative. Uh, who can be the most creative just ends up, uh, it, it'll work for six to 12 weeks. Everything works for six to 12 weeks. How do we get past that six to 12 weeks and continue to make progress beyond that without getting you injured? Because most people are gonna get injured right around that six to 12 week time frame. If they can keep you healthy for six to 12, for 12 weeks, then they'll keep, they'll keep you forever. So the same thing at Grit Gym. I wanna keep you consistent for 12 weeks because I know that you're gonna make progress in that time. But now I got a, now I got a, a new obstacle to keep you consistent forever because I know that we can continue to make progress beyond that 12 weeks if you're on our program. But for the most part, the fitness industry is really screwing, <laughs> screwing that up. They're really, they're like, you, you can't maintain this overly uh, high intensity stuff for extremely long periods of time uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the, the livelihood that most of us live. Uh, if you got a regular job, you got kids, you got that kind of stuff, you have more stressors than professional athletes do, they get to sleep for 12 hours a day. But anyway, string conditioning is not about being creative. It is a measurable science. And uh, so much so that if we don't get the thing, if we do the thing and we don't get what we expected, we know that something was missing in the middle. And that's a lot of the reason that I say, like if you're doing your programming correctly, uh, there's so much data out there on string conditioning uh, that it's insane. And the it's insane that the fitness industry continues to deny that that science does exist and doesn't look into it. And then it kind of blows my mind sometimes. But anyway, I don't want to get on a rant about the complaints about the fitness industry because that could go on and on uh, and I don't want to be a complainer. But anyway, thanks for being here, guys. Really appreciate it. Please click the share button, send it out to everybody you know. And remember, health is your greatest resource in your life. You cannot enjoy your time, your, uh, your money, or your relationships the way that you want without massive amounts of health. And you have to get that through exercise, nutrition, mindset, and recovery. It is not a one trick thing. You have to have the full, uh, all four tires of that thing going. But anyway, thanks for being here. We'll be back. Uh, we'll be at, back tomorrow. Usually it's the Eric and Adam show tomorrow, but Eric's actually on vacation, so it'll just be me. Uh, maybe I'll get an interview by then. We'll see. But anyway, thanks for being here, guys. We'll see you soon.